Europe is waging a multi-front attack on the market. Spanish debt pain a sinking euro and the looming threat of a Greek eurozone exit. Just to name a few of the headlines we've been looking at. With all the potential perils piling up, how do you make sense of all this danger today? We are playing Pick Your Panic. Yes, with an economist and an investor that are here to help us get some clarity on all this chaos. Steve Wood, Chief Market Strategist with Russell Investments, is here with us. And in London, Megan Grease, Senior Economist with Rubini Global Economics, is with us. We also still have Mike standing by as our guest host. So first starting it off with Megan. Megan, you're over there in London. Do you feel like there's a light at the end of this tunnel? Do you feel like the ECB will step in and and do whatever it needs to do at some point to backstop all these losses or is that just not going to happen no i unfortunately think that this crisis has a long way to run and actually i think the ecb is the one institution that is poised to step in and help but I don't think the ECB can step in and erase this crisis entirely. What we need is a complete restructuring of the Eurozone, and the ECB can't do that on its own. So I think we'll be jumping from crisis to crisis for a couple more years. So are you prepared then? Do you think investors should be preparing themselves for a Grexit, that in fact Greece is going to exit the Eurozone, and that then in turn would encourage bank runs throughout the region, uh, beginning namely in Spain immediately after? Well, I do think that we can expect a Greek exit from the Eurozone. I don't think it will be as soon as some are saying. So I think it could happen as early as the beginning of next year. So whatever government comes into power in Greece after the June 17th election, I think we'll find a compromise with the Troika because it's in everybody's best interest for Greek not to default and exit right now. Steve but eventually, I do think it will. Steve Wood, does she have a point? I mean, everyone is in this together. And at the end of the day, uh, no one wants to see the Greeks exit. No one wants to see what the bank runs might mean for the for the region. Is there enough will, enough political will to actually get something done? That is a very, very good question. I mean, I think that the elections in, in June, June 17th, could be as inconclusive as they were uh, earlier this month. So what if you don't get a clear majority? Or what if you get an even better showing by, you know, this anti-austerity party, this more left-wing party? Yeah. So I think the results could be inconclusive, which means you just drag this on. But also, I think another point, too, is... Uh, the, the big concern and the call to action over Greece was the contagion effect. Well, you know what? Spain's already infected. So I think the leverage that Greece has going into the Troika has been diminished by the fact that they're probably going to turn their guns uh, towards Spain and kind of what ammunition they do have, they, they're going to think about reserving for Spain. Megan Green, you're in London and you're talking to a lot of the people who actually have, uh, in theory, an ability to make a difference and turn this thing around. What actually jumpstarts talks so that something legitimate, something real that European leaders can agree on actually happens. What's the catalyst? What we need is, uh, yeah, we need a wholesale rethink of the crisis response. So there's talk about a growth compact um, at the EU level. That will help on the margins, but that won't be a game changer. What we really need is a fiscal union. So I think what we would need is enough um, drama in the Eurozone. We would need things to get really, really bad in order for any of the core countries to actually think about signing up to any kind of a fiscal transfer union or to Eurobonds Don't eventually. you mean a political union? I Megan, I mean not just a fiscal union because the Eurozone is supposed to be that, but you need some kind of political unity so that there's a way to govern all these different places and all these different interests uh, and all these different economies. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So Germany has always been insistent that it's fine with the idea of Eurobonds, but they need to happen at the end of a long process that starts with political union. And we're, see, we're seeing how well that's going, um, not very well at all. Um, and then that's followed by a pooling of assets. And finally, at the end of it, it you will have a pooling of liabilities and Eurobonds. And that's probably the right way to go about it. But they needed to have started about 20 years ago to get <laughs> Eurobonds in place in time to keep these countries in the Eurozone. All right, so Megan, what does that mean on the time factor? Do you think it's going to take 20 years to really get something done there? Um, or might we see something as early as, you know, this time next year? 
So we could see um, stronger signals that countries are willing to take steps towards euro bonds. I don't think we'll see that in the next year. I think we'll see Greece and Portugal exit before that happens. I think we'll see a debt restructuring in Spain and Italy before that happens. So, you know, I think we're a long way away from countries actually taking the steps necessary for a fiscal union. So what about navigating your way through all this? Bingo. Well, it depends on your time horizon. It really does. You're talking about e economics, which is a great man. I, I'm an economist as well. Uh, but if you've got a short-term time horizon, there's going to be a lot of volatility. And you're talking about the fiscal union or the lack thereof, the political union. That was the fundamental birth defect of the year and it was never addressed. And you, you guys have done very good research, I think, you know, with Bob Mundell and the architects of the Euros here at Bloomberg. Uh, but you're going to need to see that, but you're going to have to hit a crisis. Short term volatility is going to be rather, rather Short -term significant. Short term volatility, well, so how do you prepare? Do you exactly. buy the VIX? I well, mean, you've got you $155 billion mm -hmm. under management. Yeah. Where are you hiding it? Uh, well, we're not hiding it. What we're looking at is where are the opportunities. Short term, we're, we're positioning the funds for the volatility that's going to happen. But longer term, if you're an investor and move out of the trading environment, I think you, volatility is giving you some opportunities. If you're looking two, three, four years out, uh, you, you're seeing, I think, you know, valuations. We're going to get to extremes. Uh, you're talking about fixed income opportunities. If you know what you're buying, if you've got the playlist ready, uh, I, I think for longer term investors, you've, you've got an opportunity here that you didn't have in, let's say, three or four months. So do you so want to be U.S. centric or do you want to be involved? I mean, you could argue, you could argue, Steve, that there are some opportunities in some of these multinationals. Uh, uh, I would argue that as well. I would argue you that would. as well. Okay. But, but I think a globally diversified portfolio, you need a multi-asset uh, strategy that's going to be longer term. But I think a good base camp is the U.S. We like the U.S. The economy is doing a hair better than not bad in the U.S. I think you're seeing stabilization and a uh, uh, jobs market, maybe even in, in housing. So if you're looking from a corporate uh, valuations and corporate earnings, you know, the U.S. is, uh, you know, a US not bad relative but what's option. Your, what's, your, what's your catalyst to talk to your clients about, hey, you know what, it's really bad over in Europe, we need to start investing there. Well, that, have, you that, even, have you even started that conversation? Of course, we started that conversation you know, a couple years ago, and, and certainly over the last large number of weeks we had that conversation. It depends. It's, it's a stock picker's game. I think you get into active management. Uh, security selection is going to be a paramount. Yeah, but you you're can, talking about two, three, four years of more headaches. Why do you want to be buying in Europe right now if you've got more pain to come? No, what I said is for longer-term investors that have a two, three-year-long time horizon, then you're looking at evaluations play. You're looking at portfolio management from a longer-term perspective as opposed to trying to protect from you know some short term volatility. I think the time horizon is very, very critical in how you position yourself. So what is the time horizon? I mean, how long is this pain really going to continue? If you listen to Megan, and Megan, you made the point that, you know, we're not really anywhere near resolving this. What it may eventually require is a completely different Eurozone as we know it. Uh, what is the time horizon for an investor? Oh, for the time horizon for that, I mean, that, that is going to be a large number of quarters. You're, you're going to have to get treaties. You're going to have to get referenda voted on. I mean, it's going to be a while. Uh, I think what most likely is this. If Greece does have a Grexit and if Spain really teeters, then you might get the marshalling of the, the smaller countries willing to accept a, you know, a junior partnership mm -hmm. in this new Europe. And then you're going to have to have, you know, when, policy. when, when? Uh, that's a good wait, question. Wait, wait, wait. 2013-ish <laughs> would probably be a good time frame for the political wheels to turn that quickly. In the meantime, however, there's you know very well-run companies in Europe. Uh, China uh, is going to be a story that's going to be important. Look at the United States and kind of use that as your base camp. Build a portfolio out from there. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Steve Wood, Chief Market Strategist with Russell Investments. Megan Green, thank you so much. Senior Economist with Rubini Global Economics.